What is up gang and welcome to Inspired By, a series where we look at the musical trends past and present to better understand the techniques used so you guys can make better music. Here's what we're looking at today. So this came as an absolute surprise to me. This episode is inspired by John Frusciante. That's right, this guy. Yes, the guitarist from Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'm not a big Red Hot Chili Peppers fan and I wasn't aware that John Frusciante already had 12 solo albums. Today's inspiration came from his latest album, which was released on the 23rd of October, Friday Just Gone, and the album's called Maya. He says that this album was inspired by the years 91 to 96, UK breakbeat, hardcore and jungle, some of his favorite genres. So this episode of Inspired By is based in the UK based on UK bass music, inspired by John Frusciante. I think we got there. So when I heard the lead single, Brand E, I noticed that there was this amazing force perspective technique used on the drums. I'm not gonna play it because I don't want this video to get flagged, but check it out. There's a link to his Bandcamp and Spotify below. And for the first minute, the drums are mono. They're completely in the middle with the synth pads and leads being in the side pan. As the electronic track grows into what we'll call the chorus, the drums completely punch you in the face and a panned hard left and hard right with the kick drum being central. And I thought this was an amazing technique that we can definitely use in an episode of Inspired By. Before we jump into the breakdown, I have a quick question for you guys. As somebody that hasn't listened to too much of John's solo work, is there something that I'm missing? What are your track recommendations that I should check out? In your opinion, is this his best work? I'd absolutely love to know. As always guys, remember this is Inspired By. We're not trying to recreate John Frusciante's work. We're just trying to take inspiration from it to build into our own track. With that in mind, let's jump into it. All right, for this tutorial, it's probably gonna be helpful for you guys to have a set of headphones because you're gonna to wanna to hear the panning. There's a lot of panning in this tutorial and I want you guys to have the best experience possible. Shout out Wadira on this uh, track for sending me some chords that I can use sounding lush. I'm gonna play those on their own because they are just so nice sitting on top of this rhythm. Absolutely love that. Thank you so much, buddy, for sending those out for today's video. Uh, I'm going to play the drum stem because that's why we're here just on its own. So what we have going on is we have a grouped track with just multi-band OTT on there and just the free DJM filter, which I'll then include as always in the description below. And then we've got a panned drum stem on the left, on the right, and then our kick drum is central. And you can see that I've kind of used different parts of these drum stems just from Splice and manipulated them slightly with a little bit of a millisecond delay there as well. Let's make this again from scratch. Cool, so right at the top here, I have the two drum stems that I actually used. So let's have a little look at them as they are. So you can tell that there's a little splash cymbal part at the beginning here. And I really didn't want to use that section. I thought it was a little bit too jarring, a little bit too staccato for what I wanted to do. So I've obviously cropped that section out. And on the second stem here, One of the first things to notice is if we listen to this track here, focus on that kick drum and focus on the kick drum of this track. Super, super subby, right? So I wanted to make sure that in what was going to be our track that we made sure that the kick drum was central and it was our own. So again, I'm just going to jump into splice and I'm going to choose a kick drum that I think complements the two stems that we have going on. Something that is subby with not too much attack. We can, of course, EQ it. And I really like this kick drum here. Despite it being a loop, it has a lot of tail end and a lot of character. So I'm just gonna drag that in. And of course, I'm just gonna crop 
a section of that command E to create a slice and we're just going to fade out that little tail end there as well. Now something that I've done in the original track is I've faded in manually quite a lot of that kick drum. Here's what it looked like originally and I've faded it to about here. Now of course you can create uh, a sidechain compressor and allow your mono kick drum to be alleviated slightly but I like to have that manual control over how it sits. So looking at my waveform I know that I'm going to take it to about the midsection. So when that kick drum plays initially here we have the attack, we have that click but down here we have all the kind of sub bass region as well. So jumping straight into it what I need to do is choose the sections that I think are going to bring out the most character uh, and be the most interesting when we form a loop. So let's do that. I do like the beginning of that but I just don't like this little pushed splash note. Take that. Don't like that. And then I like everything to the end, I think. Yeah. This I'm going to chop on its own because I really like this section that we find in drum and bass all of the time. So let's chop this bit here as well. That's really, really, really nice. And I'm just going to get rid of all of those bits that I said I didn't really like. Do the same with the second line. And I think I could probably fast forward through this section. Oh, that's lovely. And again, we can stretch that out to make sure it lasts. Great. So now, of course, we have to put our kick drums underneath. So I can see already, let's just create a spare one over here, that there's going to be two kicks at the start. And again, two kicks here. One final one. There we go. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add an EQ to this. I'm going to use Pro Q2, but you don't have to. You can just use the standard Ableton EQ if you want to. Remember when using Pro Q, always set it to linear phase first. You'll thank me later. So I really like that. And I think this is going to be our right pan one. So what I want to do is leave the hi-hats in the right side, take away some of those uh, more snare bass frequencies. Let's have a look at the second one. Yeah, so I like all of the snare rolls, all of the kick drums in this one. So we're going to obviously alleviate some of the highs. We'll pick up that middle section there to about 2 dB. Let's get rid of that kind of 450 region. Going to be super harsh with that and just make it sound a little bit more tight. Of course, our kick drum is going to sit mid. So I'm going to take this off to about 100 hertz. I'm going to try and remember that shape, especially the 450 region, especially the roll off here. And then from about 2752, we're going to start to bring up our hi-hats as well. So 100, 450, 2752. Roll it off to about 100. Doesn't have to be as severe on this one because we don't have as many sub frequencies. Again, the 450 region, we're going to keep kind of high. We're going to take this area down and we're going to take this area down. And then we're going to boost the high frequencies, as I said, from about here. So of course we can edit this as we go along, but let's see what it sounds like when we do start to pan these. So I'm going to grab the utility plugin and I'm going to throw that on the left side, make it mono, and then copy it up to all three of my drum stems. Okay. I'm going to pan this one. Uh, which was this? Was this my hard? Oh, okay. So this was my right side pan. And I'm going to make this about 24 clicks to the right. And again, this is already set to mono and I'm going to make this about 25 clicks to the left. I do think I'm going to take off a little bit more kick from this side. Lovely. And then we're going to look at our kick drum, which of course we want to be just subby area. We don't really want too much of anything else in there. So 
Pro Q2. Let's have a look at what the kick drum looks like. So it's already in a great place. I do have somewhat of a subby bass, so I'm going to take off kind of the 25 hertz region and I'm going to bring this down. I think something like that's going to work really fine. So what I did in my first clip originally, if we go back to it, is you can see I actually created a little bit of a millisecond delay between these stems, just so I emphasized a little bit more the human feel, the unquantization of what was being played. So we're going to do the same down here as well. We're going to take this one to about two, this one to minus three, and this one to five. As a quick reminder guys, if you're interested in any of the gear that I use, be it for streaming or for recording, look in the description below. There's a kit.co link that you guys can check out and that will link you to any of my associate links on Amazon. It's become a regular thing that I'm running a bi-weekly beat battle and if you want to take part the winner will be featured in a future episode of Inspired By. If you want to become a supporter of the show I greatly appreciate it and you can sign up to my Patreon where I can clean up your track, give you advice and even give you one-to-one -one track feedback or production sessions. As always all of those links are in the description below. Let's get back to the episode. Cool so all that's left now to do is group these and what we're going to do is set OTT onto this. So let's see what this sounds like uh, on its own. So right now it's super, super high. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the downward percentage down until I feel like it's in a better place for us to work with. I'm really liking that. I am going to take out some of the frequencies here. So just reducing some of the low end here because it doesn't need to be as subby as it is. The next thing I'm going to do in terms of forward thinking, uh, bearing in mind the arrangement, is add a DJ filter. If you don't have this, of course, you can use the EQ as well. Here's that free plugin once again from Exfa and it works really, really nicely. This allows me to control the entire drum stem. So again, we can create a nice arrangement from that. And that's pretty much the entire drum stem. When we go back to our arrangement, what I've done in certain places is just crop certain parts that I like to add a little bit of differentiation in the track, such as this section here. And you can hear the low pass take effect as well. So with that drum stem there, just low pass filter, chop it up and then bring in your lead synth line. So what I've done with my quick arrangement is actually created uh, an exact replica with another instance of OTT and just mono utility there. Because listening to John Frusciante's track, you can hear that some of the sections are actually inverted, if you like. So we have the drums, mono, and then we have some of the synths panned sort of 25% left and right as well. I've just created a slightly different looking OTT here. You can see that I've taken the highs all the way out, the lows all the way out, the mids are up there and the downward percentage is all the way down, different to how we're seeing our main uh, instance of OTT. And then of course, we've got our mono utility and then our DJ filter. This is what we've created in the intro. You'll notice that I start to wash out the lead synth. And I start to bring in the main synth here as well. So let's just listen to the drums on their own real quickly. You think you know where it's going and then it smashes it out of the park by panning it.
Again, this intro drum is chopped up ever so slightly different. You can hear the double kick drum at the end there, which doesn't play anywhere else. And you can hear that I've just slightly low passed it at the very end. So you can see that it comes down a little bit in volume, again, to smash you in the face when it comes in at bar nine. But also if we have a look at our DJM filter, uh, you can see that I'm bringing it right up to about sort of four and a half bars and then bringing it down ever so slightly at the end. So when it does come in, it's fully bright, it's fully impactful, and it just really hits you in the chest when we go to that panned section. So there we have it, guys. A quick technique that was inspired by John Frusciante's solo album, Maya, on his lead single, Brandy. Try using this technique in your own music, and if you create something that you're really proud of, please link it to our Discord below in Share Your Work. And whilst you're there, why not take part in our bi-weekly beat battle? The winner, as always will be featured in an episode of Inspired By. I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. As always, like, subscribe, share this video. It greatly helps out the channel. As always guys, I wish you well and I'll see you next time.